we're going to look on this slide at the common metabolic pathway. Um, and so if we can go back to where we began here, common metabolic pathway is happening in the mitochondria. Um, or over here, it's where everything is the same no matter what food you ate. So that's um, the common metabolic pathway. Um, on the first slide, we referred to this as stage three, and then this was stage four. So we're gonna first take a look at stage three, which is the citric acid cycle, or um, no apostrophe there, the Krebs cycle, if you're in a more bio-focused class. Um, they mean the same exact thing though. So remember that the goal of the citric acid cycle is to convert the acetyl-CoA. At this point, all of your food has been converted into acetyl-CoA. Um, so you're gonna convert that into high energy um, coenzymes. And those coenzymes, um, for every one acetyl-CoA that gets processed, you're gonna get three NADH and one FADH2 coenzymes. Um, and also, at the same time, um, we're going to lose two carbon dioxides. Um, those are gases, so that's what we're breathing out. And we also, just as a little side bonus, um, gain a GTP, which is the same as ATP in terms of providing energy, it's just a different base with um, guanine instead of adenine. Um, so just to remind you, we've been using um, our pink for coenzymes, and so we are having acetyl-CoA help us produce this NAD and FAD coenzymes, and then we've been using green for the substrate. Um, this is our fuel initially that we ate. Our food has now turned into acetyl groups, and we're going to further reduce that down to just hydrogens and electrons um, as we go forward. So if we can take a look at the citric acid cycle here, notice that it is a cycle unlike the linear pathways that we've seen so far. Um, and you can see at the top here, um, here is that CoA, and then here is that acetyl group that comes in. And you'll wanna watch the animation um, for this as well as work the worksheet um, on page 90 eventually is gonna be your homework to work on that. This is page um, 90 in your workbook or we'll be starting that in class together. Um, but in this citric acid cycle, you can see that we have two carbons and they come in and join onto this four carbon oxaloacetate. Um, and so then once I add those two carbons, I now have six carbons. So I go from four carbons, grab those extra two, and now I have six. Um, as I work around the circle here, um, you can see that at this point here, step three, notice the steps are all numbered for you. Step three, I produce an NADH. Step four, I produce an NADH. Step six, I produce an FADH2. And step eight, I produce an NADH. And if you want to, you can keep that little reminder that these are high energy, they have those um, H's on them. And so those are the key products that we talked about. One acetyl comes in, and gives me that much. And this acetyl um, could be originally from protein. It could be from carbs. It's where the bulk of our energy comes from, but it also could be um, from fats or lipids. So any of those um, can get metabolized until eventually you have just this kind of standard two carbon um, acetyl group here. Um, other things to look for, here are the CO2s one CO2 and two. And so you'll notice I had four carbons, I picked up two, and then I had six, lost one, I'm down to five, lost another, I'm back to four carbons as I continue. Um, and then this oxaloacetate just gets recycled over and over again. So these two carbons are now breathed out as carbons. That means no matter what you eat, you breathe out a lot of the carbon that you take in. You keep some of it to rebuild in your body, um, but a lot of the carbon that we consume, we just breathe out. Um, and that's what happens when you burn carbon fuels, right? Is you produce carbon dioxide. So it's the same thing happens, but in a really fast way when we burn fossil fuels, um, we end up breathing out or producing a lot of carbon dioxide. And if you do that too quickly, then you start to fill the atmosphere up with more carbon dioxide um, than should normally be there um, if we were keeping some kind of balance. So that is um, the citric acid cycle at a quick glance. Oh, the one other thing that we get out of this is the GTP, which is a close cousin of ATP, and there's where that GTP is coming out. Um, 
So just to glimpse ahead to what you're gonna do on this worksheet, page 90, um, here's the citric acid cycle. You need to be able to understand and identify what's happening here. And that would be by answering questions like this. So can I find key features on it? Can I um, count up what's produced, what's used? And can I de identify the types of reactions? Um, so for example, if I take a look at reaction two here, Remember, just like we learned to interpret the glycolysis pathway, um, if I look at two here and there's nothing added and nothing removed at this step, then I must just be making an isomer. So I gave you some ideas of reaction types here. This would be an isomerization reaction where I just rearrange. And you can see that in these names, citrate turns into isocitrate. So look for all those little clues. Um, there's so many word cues when you look at the chemicals um, in different processes. Um, another reaction you haven't seen before, at reaction three here, or at step three, you can see there's a couple things going on. So NAD turning into NADH, I can think, okay, that coenzyme is being reduced. That means the isocitrate must be oxidized. So I could say that this is oxidation, but at the same time, I'm also losing a carbon dioxide um, and I'm losing it right off of here. Um, off of the side of that chain. And so we have a new reaction that we haven't seen before, decarboxylation, or removing a carboxyl group. Um, and so this step three has not only oxidation, but it also is what we would describe as a decarboxylation reaction. Um, it's a little bit tricky to describe what's happening at steps one and steps five, so I won't ever ask you those but you should be able to work through all of these questions about what's happening in the citric acid cycle.